It's lovely to see you. Some of you I've just seen recently, others I haven't seen for a little while. Um, and um, we're, we're, we've definitely turned into the new season now. It's already just a bit darker as we begin the Dharma talk. Um, this has been a week of a lot of intense practice, a week of exploring uh, the now and here. As we had the opportunity to practice also with Shanae and Soten, who were on their way to a prolonged pilgrimage to the southern tip of South America. In addition to our usual offerings, we sat the hours that flowed from, that flowed Wednesday into Thursday, sitting through the watches of the night, which is a really ancient practice in not only the Buddhist tradition, in many traditions, many other religious traditions. This retreat tapped the profound stillness that arises as the one mind and as outer activity ceases. One mind in the now, referring to the mind of human, plants, animals, air, earth, all of it that together animates our direct experience. Through the watches of the night, not only did we um, track our own variousness of awareness, but um, we also could listen to the sounds of the city change with the dimming of the light and then the coming back of the light. Continuous practice in the way that we did this takes us out of a clock sense of time and into the truth of ever presentness. And in these conditions, we can see clearly in a way that there's no time, uh, no time but the present now. I highly recommend to all of you that you uh, consider joining us for an all night sit the next time we do it. Um, it's really very, very deep practice. It's as difficult as a session and as rewarding as a session. Then the next thing we did um, yesterday was we enjoyed a 10 Directions uh, Kinhin session at Finley Wildlife Refuge, south of town. And so I wanted to share some thoughts about Kinhin. Kinhin practice, walking meditation, is a practice that uh, too often doesn't get much attention. We may do it regularly between sits, but we don't really attend to it as a full practice, which is odd because we are always walking. It's something that we do continually in our lives. Uh, it's a practice of presence during activity that is so readily integrated into daily activities. So it's, it's our ongoing opportunity when we take it up as a serious practice of kinhin in all of the different conditions that hold in the different times of our day and our activity level. Walking uh, doesn't often get a lot of attention, but let's think about this activity which threads most of our hours of our waking days. It's one of the four postures for meditation that the Buddha taught. The upright body moving through space. And yet, even though we're moving, we're always right here. So this is a practice of here-ness, of being here as we move through space. Please, uh, I suggest that you use this practice for a day actively to explore it more fully for yourself. Every time you get up, you transition into the upright posture, standing, and then stepping out. Um, regard it with the mind of practice and see what you notice. What's, um, what's outside the flesh body 
as you walk? What makes up the fullness of this moment? What joins us in this moment all around us? So what is the complete body of the present moment? It's not just our own flesh body, it's everything that is part of this. At our uh, 10 Direction Sashin Soten led us in standing meditation. And here are a few details that he covered. Uh, we begin by standing. And standing practice is something we also do a lot. Out and about waiting in line, for instance, Standing practice is one aspect of walking. While still, before the first step begins, how still can you be? So as you, as you experiment with this practice, before you start walking, just stand there for a moment and be completely still. Can you feel the soles of your feet? Are you evenly balanced on both feet? Can you feel the pelvis settle and support the whole frame? How about the spine? Can you feel your spine? And the head, how the head balances easily on the tip of the spine. Or do you hold your head really rigidly? If you tend to have a lot of shoulder and neck pain, it may be in tension. It may be that the head is held too firmly as though it's going to fall off if we don't keep holding on to it. And then uh, the sternum, the lifting of the sternum in the posture. Often we can get kind of sunken. It's one of the natural aspects of aging in a body is the front of the body contracts and the back of the body rounds. So also, can you, as you're standing, be fully aware not only of the front of your body, but the back of your body? And then, of course, the flow of the breath. These are just a few details. What other details do you notice when you just stand, doing standing practice? And then, even before you step out, can you be aware of the intention to take the step as the step gathers? Being aware of intention is a very interesting practice when you begin to intend. And then the actual first step begins. So I'm describing the kind of minute detail that we can engage in this practice. There's a, um, there's a form of meditation and art in Japan called Buto. And if you ever watch a Buto performance, um, some of them are incredibly slow. You can barely see any movement, but you see that they're moving along. It's kind of like the clouds last yesterday when we were doing sky gazing. It, you couldn't see the wind moving the clouds and yet the cloud, the form of the clouds was continually changing. It was so interesting. So we can, we can look at that, we can play with that to move very, very slowly and smoothly just for fun. And to also feel what you notice in the body as you do that. When formally practicing outside in the great outdoors, we can begin by greeting the path. We can greet the path as we stand there and begin. Meeting the many fellow living beings that lie along there. That we're entering their home territory of trees and shrubs, chipmunks, the lush-tailed squirrels that we have in this area, the bees, birds, worms. And notice also what evidence of others are there. Is there scat? Do you come across scat or feathers or footprints? 
So this is part of greeting, greeting the path. Walt Whitman says it this way, you road, I enter upon and look around. I believe you are not all that is here. I believe that much unseen is also here. You light that wraps me in all things in delicate equable showers. You paths worn in the irregular hollows by the roadsides. I believe you are latent with unseen existences. Yesterday it was so apparent when we when we started down this beautiful long boulevard. We obviously were going into the neighborhood that many, many creatures live in. The plant and animal creatures. So whether in the fields or woods or in the neighborhood or a city block, all of it encompasses the here. We are always here. We're always now, even when thinking of the next step, we're still here. Even when taking the next step, we're still here. It was wonderful to work with that thought of we are, I am here along the, the, uh, the trail yesterday. So the Buddha taught five benefits of walking meditation. You can walk long distances and endure traveling by foot, which is mostly how people traveled in his day. Uh, it helps us become patient and endure sustained exertion. So not only is it good to take short walks, it's really good to take a long walk whenever we can get to it. Um, it enhances physical health and we become free from disease. And that's certainly true. And actually recently I saw another article saying walking is like the best exercise. Well, for anybody who's a regular walker, that's no news. Um, walking benefits digestion. And it establishes a stability of concentration. Now he's talking about walking meditation becoming completely absorbed in the body walking. But there's in, it's interesting when we're not, we're not specifically doing walking meditation, even as we're walking along, there is a part of the mind, part of awareness that is always aware of the walking. Even if we're thinking, we're aware of the walking. The body keeps the score, <laughs> keeps the awareness. Um, so Kinhin can be a uh, practice beyond the usual break from long sitting. Uh, though Kinhin is a really good uh, preparation for long sitting, before we sit for a long time, it's good to take a walk. Uh, and in between sitting periods to walk and stretch our legs and just relax the whole frame, which can gather tension when we sit still. Uh, the kinhin during between um, seated meditations, it's one way to move the body while keeping attention steady, keeping awareness steady. The Buddha exhorts us to walk naturally with calm dignity and comfort. His phrase is, place your foot on the surface of the earth the way an empress would place her seal on a royal decree. So this is a really old fashioned reference, but it brings to mind a certain kind of um, gathered power and confidence in ourselves <laughs> uh, that we invest in each step. When we um, place the foot on the surface of the earth the way an empress would place her seal on a royal decree. It's one of the uh, practices that Thich Nhat Hanh suggests is 
uh, when walking, be aware of the footprint that you leave behind. So that's another, it's a variation on this one. He also says, um, during walking meditation, consciously make an imprint on the ground as you step. If your steps are peaceful, the world will have peace. If you can make, take one peaceful step, then you can take two. You can take 108 peaceful steps. If you take one peaceful step, you can take two. This is the same principle as in uh, Zazen. If you can have one breath that is completely at ease, one moment of the mind at ease, then, you, then we know that it's possible to have that. So what marks this kind of walking is that you're not going anywhere. You're just walking, just to walk, going without arriving. The, uh, in the uh, Precious Mirror Samadhi, it says, no going, no coming, no arising, no abiding. And that's true in walking meditation. We're going without arriving. There's nothing to be gained and there's nothing to be lost. We're doing it for its own sake. And we're never leaving the here. And all the while appreciating that, um, that this body can walk. Uh, Thich Nhat Hanh has said the miracle is that we can walk on this earth. Think of all the forces that are, that are at play to allow us to walk on this earth. You can take it all so for granted. The purpose of walking is walking itself, walking with ease. It's one of the beautiful things about walking to do your errands. Or, you know, if you're a bike rider, you do the same thing. You do it for its own sake because it's so joyful. And then you do the work also that you have to do. It's win, 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 every step, every turn of the wheel. So every step that you have taken has led you here. I wonder how many steps each of us has taken in our lives. And each now, just, just as each step is here, each now is where time begins. Each here is where the path begins. The path is always completely manifesting. It's complete. <clears throat> so the, the Kinhin Seshin was called walking in the 10 directions. Uh, that's a phrase that we come across a lot in Buddhism uh, because the count, there are countless Buddha lands in the 10 directions. It's, it's a way of describing uh, the infinite. 10 directions actually means every and all directions. But specifically also, they refer to north, south, east, west, northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest, above and below. And we could also, if we're talking about directions, we could also say, and what about the center? So we could add, we could add another one, the center. We practiced uh, yesterday the dance of the 10 directions. Uh, in each direction, we performed a series of gestures that encompass the primal characteristics of all activity, beginning with joining earth and sky, and then gathering. So we would gather in every direction, hold, turn, around to the other direction and then give. So joining earth and sky above and below. We're always, we're, we can be aware of above and below. It's a wonderful practice to walk and look up. I mean, keep track of where you are, but look up at the tops of trees. 
There's a lot going on up there. And for me, I do that all the time because it gives my body a certain sensation of being up there. I can feel what it's like to just lightly. Yesterday, um, while waiting for everybody to get there, there was a, a very large uh, bird that landed on the tip of a branch and it was way heavy. The, the bird was way too heavy for the branch. So it was going like this. So he slowly just slowly made his way to where the branch joined the trunk of the tree and just sat right in there. So that, that I, I could see when I looked up. Um, and, then, um, and then gathering is the next one. Gathering from every direction. We're always gathering. We're always gathering. So notice as you pick things up or shop or straighten, whatever you do, all the gathering involved. And then there's holding. Whatever we've taken in, either the physically or whatever we integrate is the holding. And then turning. How many ways in a day does turning manifest? That's another inquiry that we can make. And during the dance of the 10 directions, we physically just turned in the other direction uh, with full awareness. And how we turn toward what's in front and leave behind. So there's all of that involved with it. This is simplistic, but because of it, we never, we may never notice any of this stuff going on. And then the last is giving back. Uh, the generosity of all life forms. Giving and receiving are twins. They always go together, giving and receiving. If somebody gives you something, uh, it is only valuable as you really receive it. So as we did this dance, we pivoted around the center. There's always the center, the, the here and the now. At this uh, 10 direction session, we then spread cloths on uh, the field and lay down, had a snack, and then we, uh, we did some sky gazing and we were fortunate to have some wonderful clouds, just enough that there was a huge field of blue and then there were just a few really dynamic clouds. And uh, we could, we could uh, project our own uh, body into that vastness or whatever. I don't know what, we didn't actually discuss it. I don't know what people did. I just tend to watch the clouds. And how often as adults do we allow ourselves to do that? Just to lie down? and sky gaze. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful way to relax deeply and open and let go of having to know anything and let go of having to think. There's something about gazing at the sky that helps us not be involved in thought. Just be present in the here. and be present with the way the larger uh, universal physical energies and the energies of our own imagination manifest. So we can, we can uh, dedicate this practice to uh, Buddha who is complete, always dwelling in the 10 directions of the universe. She or he or they who practice kinhin and walks this path. We are Buddha walking. We dedicate to Dharma always. The Dharma is always found in the 10 directions, never outside the 10 directions. This is the path itself. And then the Sangha always dwelling in the 10 directions of the universe is our whole self, the wholeness of us as well as the family of beings who accompany us on this path. So this is a, this is a full hearted, 
wholehearted, whole-bodied practice of kinyin. And I hope that these words about it encourage you to, um, to appreciate all the many, many ways that walking demonstrates the Dharma and can help us awaken. Thank you.